So are you pushing the button or what? <laughs> it's pushed. Hey, everybody. Here we are. Vincent Racaniello and Amy Rosenfeld. Welcome back, Amy. Hello, Vincent. How are you today? I am well, thank you. Shall we get right to the questions? Okay. J.H., if infected patients get monoclonal antibody treatment, why does it not translate to long-term immunity? Don't the virus particles still get recognized and remembered despite the antibodies? No. Because they don't replicate, right? Well, they're neutralizing antibodies, right? You're given neutralizing antibodies. They in neutralize the incoming particle. What is there to infect? Why would the particle be recognized? Yeah, so the particles will be blocked from replicating. You'd need some replication to get an immune response. So, uh, they, Yeah, they're, they're not more... even clear that you're infected. Neutralizing antibodies usually prevent infection. Yep. Okay, from Texas. Any Amy fans in Texas looking forward to tonight? Hey, you got fans in Texas, man. Texas is a long place, a long, far away drive from here. Well, it's not snowing there because it is snowing here, right? Yeah, I haven't been up, but I'm sure I will check through the snow, although this is nothing. Everybody's like talking about it, but it's nothing. Yeah, it's not I lived in much. Montreal. I lived in Montreal. So Peggy said vaccine antibody dependent enhancement. Amy says it hadn't been seen in SARS or MERS. Read number of publications to the contrary. We work at home without contact. We'll wait. Okay. One year twiv addict. It's great. I don't believe that there's been ADD, ADE in SARS or MERS. I don't know what paper they're reading, but when you read papers, and you have to be very careful. There's a lot of crap out there. Yeah, it doesn't take years, but for dengue, you can be infected in the same year and get ADE, right? Yeah. Yes, Peggy, send email links. Okay. Let's see. Question is more why. If they'd been exposed to virus, they wouldn't they form durable immunity? It depends on how much virus, probably not the amount that you're exposed to in, in a respiratory droplet. It's not enough to induce immunity. The virus would have to replicate, unless you got a huge dose, which would be, you know, equivalent to what you had in a vaccine, but that's not likely. Wait a minute. Neutralizing antibodies prevent the virus from being able to infect. They usually cause a conformational change, which yes. makes the virus yes. uninfectable. Yes. So now I've deconstructed the particle. Okay. So now I'm going to be randomly taken up at some very, very low frequency by the DCs in the respiratory tract. Mm-hmm. And you want me to form immunity by that well, mechanism? It's, a, it's, it's not enough. That's what I'm saying. It's not enough of virus load to give you a, It's no DCs. virus load. It's just some crap. Well, I'm not sure it's some crap. I'm not sure that it's all confirmationally changed. I thought that that was the point of these antibodies. And you're given a bolus of antibodies. Yeah. So here's a good The antibody given early will clear virus. The host immune system may not have time to generate the right B cells to make its own antibodies. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Yep. It's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Are you clicking? Yeah, I'm going through the ones that don't need answering. Oh. All right, Troy, how will we know if people that have a vaccine are contagious or not? Contagious from what? No, if they shed virus and can spread it after being infected. Well, they're testing that by squats, you said, last week. Yeah, That's the so only way you're going to know. Mo Modern, uh, in their current um, documents, which you can get on the FDA site, they did a limited number of swabbing of people who were immunized or not, and they saw... 58 vaccinated what did i say immunized vaccinated i can use immunize if i want it's kind of slightly different but fine whatever um and they found 58 percent efficacy in the vaccine group against um 
infection when you look just for swabs and not symptoms. So, but it's limited data. But the, the people are they're going to have to look for it in the coming months for sure. Otherwise, we won't know if the vaccine prevents infection. Um, yes, Jamito Frog. Even if you covered recovered after getting monoclonal, getting a vaccine is still a good idea. Absolutely. Uh, the people well, yes, got, but you should be the you should be the last group. Uh, they're not. They're not going to prioritize, though, because you know, it takes a lot of time to test people and then decide. They're just going to immunize people. Well, all these people that he's citing are either old or fat or both. Yeah. Well, they they claim they're immune, but I don't think they are because they got monoclonal treatment. Well, they're not immune, especially when they claim that they are immune and they gave monoclonal treatment. Then they came back and what, two days later and said, oh, my God, he has antibodies, do you think? Yeah, right. <laughs> they measured the antibodies that they gave him. Exactly. All right, from Texas. Is the at-home antigen paper test being suppressed because CDC wants all test results to be monitored by them? No, it's because we don't know how to make an antibody. We don't know how to make a paper test. It's been a bunch of bullshit so far. Yeah, it's, CDC is not suppressing it at all. There just aren't any such tests yet, not paper strips anyway. Did you see today yes. a, a lateral flow home antigen test was was approved? Yeah, it's $30. It goes through your phone. $30. So let's get this correct. You have a family of five. At $30, you're spending $150 for one day of testing of your family of five. How long are you going to do that for? Two days? Now, only if they send them to me f through TWIV. I'll, yeah, I'll they're that. not sending them to you for TWIV. <laughs> and they're not sending them for you for TWIV for Doris, Nadia, Aiden, and Devin. No. So how long are yeah, you going to do that Yeah, it's too expensive. $30 is too expensive. I totally it's agree ridiculous. with you. ridiculous. It should have been subsidized by the government. You should have had a state or government app send it to everybody. Go to your local thing with your coupon and get a box of them and call it a day. This is asinine. So Peggy says, Troy per Michael Min Minna, Dr. L.C. Tan. Oh, L.C. Tan was on TWIV a long time ago. And last night on CNN, Sanjay Gupta, not my idea of an expert, re read the Moderna addendum. 37% of VAX recipients of small sample tested were positive. 63% of controls in sample positive. Yeah. That's it's not right. even twofold. But it's not even twofold. It's not even a twofold yeah, it's difference. It's too small. It's too small. They shouldn't really have even released those. Oh, here's one for you, Amy. Can virus can viruses replicate in a cell without zinc? Uh, depends on the virus. So, like picornas, rhino, and polio cannot replicate in the cell without zinc. It's a cofactor for the protease two A. In other cases, it is toxic because you have to have so much zinc that it is acidic. So it depends on the virus. Right. Stuart, when a rapid antigen test fails, what has happened physically or chemically? Is it a manufacturing defect, a fluke with the sample, human error, or something else? All of the above. So, so, and also sometimes your antibodies may be too low to be picked up to, below the limit of detection of the test. And even though you are seropositive, the, the test won't pick it up because it's not sensitive enough. Right. But, you, but all of the above and more. Yep. Oh, here's a good one. Can the giant red centipede carry coronaviruses? Does it have ACE2? Was it in the list? Was it in the bioinformatics paper? In the on the list where every no. where the guy told me that I didn't understand bioinformatics. They they only the did cataloging of ACE proteins. I think it was just mammals, wasn't it, or mostly mammals? I don't think so. Carrie, uh, if the giant red centipede could get coronaviruses, it could carry them. Whether they would replicate is unknown, but I doubt it because they're far away from mammals. The little insect. <laughs> Mary says, uh, why are Moderna and Pfizer keeping track of only symptomatic people rather than anyone who tests positive? Because they're not testing. You're you just supposed to report symptom symptoms. You're only supposed to report disease. 
but that's not even actually correct because many people are asymptomatic. So yeah. you're missing a so ton of people. It was their choice to do the trials that way, and they're looking for prevention of disease by the by the vaccine, not infection. Um, if you think about it, so the way that trials are done now, they tell the people who are in the trial, if you feel some symptoms, and here's a list, you call us and take a test, set swab, and send it to us, and we'll see if you're positive or not. Otherwise, they would have to do like daily or twice or three times a week nasal swabs and send them all in, and I guess that's a lot of work for them. Well, it's a lot. If you have 40,000 swabs every day for the next two years, do the math. It's a lot of swabs, but you could do that in a day, Amy. I could, but I'm not being employed by Moderna or Pfizer. <laughs> I, am, I don't want to be a technician. I want, I want something else. But they have a whole company. They probably have robots. You don't need that. If you don't even need that many hands. You just need a robot. Yeah, there are robots for these PCR tests. So you put it. So do you know, like when you go to WashU and they do next gen sequencing? that they just have an entire building that is long rooms where they just put the sequencers. They have like hundreds of sequencers and each room is like a hundred sequencers. That's how they crank it out. So Pfizer, you want to do it? Get a room, get a robot, put in a couple of robots, crank it out. Not a big deal. Right. Randy wants to know what happens to someone who got COVID and was asymptomatic, then takes the vaccine, not knowing he, she was already infected and has immunity. Will the vaccine have any effect or create an issue? Well, that would be ADE and it should not. So the vaccines, at least the mRNA vaccines, will not be influenced by prior immunity, right? Because they're just an mRNA is going into your cells and it's making protein that's being recognized by the immune system. So it would boost your immunity, but it wouldn't be taken away by it. Whereas if you had antibodies to an adenovirus, for example, and that adenovirus was vectoring the vaccine, then that could be a problem. Then your antibodies could interfere with the vector being able to deliver its payload. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. He's asking if you have, if you were infected with SARS-CoV-2, you had SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. Now, if I get, in, now if I get vaccinated, with adenovirus producing spike. No, that's not what the I'm saying. But that's what his question is. Well, just question why, is, why not just an mRNA vaccine? Forget the adenovirus. Is the prior so, immunity going to interfere with the mRNA vaccine? It shouldn't unless you have ADE and there's no presence right, that you right. would have ADE. So that's the right. rest of the, your answer, I don't understand. What I said was, I know what you said. I don't need to, we don't need to rehash it. If you have Just antibodies, say to an adenovirus, on top of your SARS-CoV-2 antibodies, and you got an adenovirus vectored vaccine, that could interfere with vaccine take. Right, but that's irrelevant. Of, no, it's not of, irrelevant. I think it's relevant, so I said it. Okay, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Please Move explain on. the use of aborted fetus cell usage in vaccine production. Where? It's an mRNA. You take some chemicals, you put the enzyme, and you put it in a vat, and it's a bioreactor. That vat cranks out some RNA. Where are the cells? There is no cells. There are no cells with the mRNA vaccines. But what about, Amy, the adenovirus vectored vaccine, if I may reintroduce adenovirus? What's the role of fetal cell? <laughs> <laughs> What's the role of aborted? So what you're talking about are like 293 cells, which are made from many years ago, in the 70s, from the cells of an aborted fetus. And those can be used to propagate the vectors, but they can't be used for vaccine production, for mass no. manufacturing. No cell line that can, after a certain passage will be transformed can be used because there's the potential that you would introduce them and give the person. Right. And stimulate the person for being able to become cancerous. That's why like when they did polio, like when we talked to the people about making a polio, they wanted to use Vero cells, but you had to count how many passages it was. They were. Remember that years and years yeah. and years ago? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, so for production, uh, you don't use those kind of cell lines. You may use them in vector development, but they're not used in production. Cheryl wants to know what would be the mechanism behind a food allergy being related to a strong reaction from an mRNA vaccine. 
So there were a couple of people having allergic reactions to the Pfizer vaccine. Yeah, but I don't think that that was, I don't, and Moderna. I don't think that that was food. I think that was to the lipid and it was anaphylactic shock. Did these people have food allergies though? Do you know, Amy? I don't think it said in the Times article. Yeah, I mean, when you're allergic to things, it's hard to know what new substance you would also be allergic to, like a nanopar a lipid nanoparticle. Right. Um, what I think you need to do if you have any allergy and you get this vaccine, you should have an EpiPen with you so you can take care of your reaction with epinephrine. Yeah, but even still, it's still dangerous. Yeah, I think they treated at least some of these people with uh, epinephrine. Yeah, but you can't do it yourself, that's right. for sure. Oh, so Flying Fig lived in Montreal, so Flying Fig knows what the weather is like there. Yes, it's a lot of snow. How should I try to avoid aluminum adjuvant? Do you, do you have a known allergy to aluminum? No. So if um, you have a known allergy, obviously you could avoid it, but I'm, I'm not aware of any, and it's not a lot, but some of the vaccines will be adjuvanted with aluminum. However, the lipid nanoparticle mRNA vaccines will not be. Chadox, any of these replication, either deficient or uh, a, a replication a positive uh, adenoviruses won't have adjuvant either. But some of the protein-based vaccines will. Yeah, but I don't think we need to worry about that right now. We're not How do porcine hemagglutinating and encephalomyelitis virus induce hemagglutination? Oh, this is one of Amy's favorite topics. How do viruses hemagglutinate, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> um. So there are proteins that interact with sialic acid, which is almost on every protein on the surface of the cell. It's a post-translational modification. So it's a nine carbon poly monosaccharide that's added as a signaling molecule and stuff. Um, and then the virus binds to, the, the proteins bind to the sialic acid and then they clump. Um, but these protein, these viruses actually, porcine, um, coronavirus, they have uh, they have a esterase, so it should cleave off. That's right, they do. So they cleave it off, so they don't really hemagglutinate. It's kind of like flu. Why is Regeneron's product not more widely available as it seems to be phenomenally effective when given at the right time to severe cases? Because they had a safety issue. And it's not more effective than the Eli Lilly that didn't have the safety issue. Yeah, it's, it, the problem is also it has to be intravenously given. So that really limits availability, right? Yes. And when given at the right time in severe cases. So if you're doing a trial, it's very easy to find the right, trial, right time. If you're actually doing it in real time, in real world conditions, it's very hard. Are there viruses that are beneficial to humans? Okay, Vincent, give your lecture. Lecture one of virology. I believe there are. You know, each of us has a virome, and every tissue in us has some collection of RNA and DNA viruses. So and mostly they're not pathogenic. So we suspect that some of them are beneficial, but we can't really do the experiment to check that, right? But in animals, we have some evidence that viruses can be beneficial. I think a really nice example, um, there is a, a virus of mice, a norovirus, which um, if, you, if you raise mice uh, that um, lack bacteria, their, their intestines are malformed. They have a bad immune system. They're morphologically altered. And if you infect them with norovirus, murine norovirus, it restores partially the function of the gut. So one piece of evidence that viruses can be beneficial, but in humans, there's well, no direct right. evidence, but we think so. Well, couldn't you just argue the syncytia gene from the very primordial retrovirus to allow yeah, for do the too, placental yeah. development? Yeah, so we, in some cases, genes from viruses that have infected humans years ago 
remain in the human genome and are used. So what Amy is talking about is uh, retroviruses that infected our ancestors years ago, and they left behind the uh, envelope gene that's been exapted into a gene called syncytion, which is need, needed for placental formation. And there are probably many other examples of that as well. And, um, and someone else adds that viruses are the main driver of human evolution. They are a big driver, too. Um, so that could be looked at as a benefit. They should listen to Tweeva with you and Nels. I'm sure you've discussed yeah. this at nausea. We do talk a lot about that. And now this is an interesting question. Well, they're all interesting. How can a vaccine without sterilizing immunity lead to herd immunity? Isn't polio this case and we're close to eradication? That's a great question I've been thinking a lot about lately. If a vaccine allows uh, replication and transmission, then you shouldn't be able to get herd immunity, right? Because the idea of herd immunity is that in a highly immune population reduces the likelihood that you will find a, um, a non-immune host to infect. So, um, wait a minute, wait a minute. You gave Sabin live attenuated. Mm -hmm. And you shed right. it. So it's not and you sterilizing. Shed it. It's not sterilizing, but without, without Sabin, you wouldn't have been, you, we would know, we would not be able to prevent outbreaks and we would not be close to eradication. Yeah, so Sabin, Sabin prevents gut replication if you're challenged with wild-type virus, but Salk does not. So that's why right. we use Sabin to stop outbreaks. So Sabin, right. va and Salk, Sabin vaccine is, is, is sterilizing, as sterilizing as a vaccine can be. So that's okay. how you get herd immunity from that. Right. And so you do get herd immunity, and then you come it's in. Some. Right. For the majority of times, you get herd immunity in the community, and then you come in with sulk to to prevent additional. Like it's the last step to where you can be eradicated, because then yeah, you well, get you, rid of. Then you get rid of the live virus. We're using sulk now because the the Sabin vaccine reverts and it causes polio itself, and we can't get away from that cycle. So we have to switch to. Uh, IPV or maybe Raul Andino's better OPV, right? Yeah, for sure. Here's one for you, Amy. Can fever inhibit viral replication? Why is this one for me? Because we've, know been, talking, I, we've yeah. been talking about the temperature sensitivity of EV6E. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it can inhibit viral replication because higher temperatures prevent like 40 C, which is like 100 and something Fahrenheit, um, it prevents virus particle formation or some of the particles form, fall apart. So like when we wrote the fields chapter, one of the structure papers that we talked about, about how the particle uncoded, they didn't know the receptor and they just heated it at like 40 to between 40 and 42 and the particle expanded, lost infectivity, and then we could understand how it went to the altered particle. So, yes. Yeah. See? Okay. Uh, here's a link to a bioarchive manuscript describing a deletion. H69. H69. Where is this deletion? Is this the one that arose in mink? Oh, it is? I don't remember. And I can't um, yep. copy the link. You didn't okay. get. Um, I'd have to go look at it. I will okay. look at it and tell you next time. Okay. You have homework. How many moles of spike protein may be produced from one shot of mRNA vaccine? Not not moles. <laughs> um, well, it is moles if you do the calculation, right? You have well, some a a number of molecules times some amount of weight divided by the... Grams it's gonna be like mole, blah, it's gonna blah, be like blah. it's gonna be like micromoles, right? No, Indiana. it can't be micromoles. It's got to be like picomoles. Even less, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because not much is getting in. We put a hundred micrograms in, and and even if all of that got taken up, that's a hundred micrograms of RNA. Yeah, a hundred micrograms of protein. 
So 100 yeah. micrograms yeah. of a 500 or 1,000 amino acid protein. So 1,000 amino acids times 121 Daltons mm -hmm. per amino acid, then divide mm -hmm. it by 500. Then let's say it's that 100 micrograms of RNA became, I don't know, 500 nanograms of protein. Do the math. It's like fructamols. All right, David said, last week you mentioned that to get an attenuated virus, you replace the nucleotides. Yeah, the recoding. Does that mean you have to generate the entire 30K and repackage? Yeah, so you take the whole, well, maybe not the whole thing. So the whole coronavirus genome, 30,000 bases, and I think you would probably focus on the structural proteins and recode them, not the polymerase, which is the I left. I don't know, right I would term. have focused on the non-structural proteins, like... yeah. NSP4, NSP3, NSP6, all the things that are required for the replication complex. Yeah, so basically, yeah, you do a good chunk of the genome, you, you uh, synthesize it with all the recoding, yeah. And then you put it in cells and it will generate new virus. Um, so that's how you do it. Uh, is it a good idea to take ivermectin? No. Here's the story on ivermectin. If you take the approved FDA dose in the U.S., it's not enough to inhibit virus. You don't get the same blood level as needed to inhibit virus in cell culture, so it's not going to be of any use. If you want to take, you know, 10 doses in a row, it might have side effects, so I wouldn't recommend that. And so that's one of the obstacles that to, to get the levels of the drug that you need for antiviral activity in people, you have to take way more drug than is approved for the, by the FDA. I think it's even more simple. The amount of drug that was used to demonstrate antiviral activity in cell culture is on par with the amount of drug that's lethal in mice. Not good. <laughs> uh oh, look at this one, Amy. Theoretical possibility of being a retrovirus. No. no, this is directly to you. It says, Vincent, what do you say? It doesn't say Amy. It says you. So this one's on you. Yeah, and there's another question about this. So what's happening here, if you believe it, is that the virus <laughs> gets in a cell and the some of the RNA gets in the nucleus and is copied to DNA by reverse transcriptase, which is in the cell. It's it's in the present and in, in various retro elements that, that have been in the cells for many, many years. They're part of our genome. We actually encode reverse transcriptase. And the, these people think that SARS-CoV-2 RNA is being copied to DNA. It integrates, and then the cells keep making pieces of RNA. They're not the full genome. So it's not a retrovirus. It's just an accident that happens. And I'm not sure I even believe the data yet. I think there's some issues with them. But let me tell you the most important point. Da Amy doesn't believe it, so she's usually right. She's usually right. She's got a great sense for experiments. And so I don't think this is correct. I mean, you know, the thing is, when SARS-CoV-2 infects cells, it kills them. So I don't know how the DNA would last in the nucleus, right? I don't understand that concept either. But let's just let's just think about this. The virus is in the cytoplasm, and re the DNA replication recombination machinery. Even if you just said it's all in the nucleus, personally, the only RT I would believe is in is in telomerase, and that is so so low. Yeah, the activity of that is so 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 low. Yeah. And then you go and you find where the viral RNA is. So it comes in, it uncodes, it gets immediately engaged by ribosomes. Then it makes non-structural proteins, it goes into the ER, it goes into the double membrane vesicles and convoluted tubules for replication of the negative strand back into positive strand. Where is it encountering this stuff? I mean, come on. You got to think about the biology before you start writing crappy papers. That's why they like you. You don't pull any punches. Why well, is why did, come on. I, you I'm know, agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. Don't worry. You don't have to defend. It's okay. 
Why is I'm vitamin saying, C not being promoted more by CDC and WHO as a prophylactic? As long as Pauling's dead. <laughs> she said Linus Pauling is dead. He was a big proponent of vitamin C. Uh, I don't think there are good data that prove its its efficacy. That's the problem. But like well, vitamin D, you could take vitamin C and vitamin D. It's in the right doses. It's not harmful. Um, in fact, vitamin C, Pauling used to take grams a day. Yeah, because uh, you just pee it out. You pee it's most not. of it out, but you could if you'd like to. And yeah. <clears throat> Peggy wants to know if you were talking about oral zinc supplement. No, she was just talking about whether cell viruses need zinc in cells to reproduce. Um, okay, here you go. This is for you. What does Amy think of the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine 2 discussed in TWIV 691, the presence of negative correlation of symptoms with mump antibody levels, but not measles or rubella? Do you? What do you think of that, Amy? It's very interesting. Um, the negative correlation of symptoms, but... Yeah, higher titers of mumps yes, antibody... Right. You get lower severe yeah, severity. So, yeah. Do you, do you think that's good? I think that's good. But not with me measles or rubella. Well, I don't know that I would compare the antibodies. You know, affinity and avidity of different antibodies have different effects. The, the authors seem to think there's a cross-reactivity between SARS-CoV-2 spike and uh, mumps virus spike. I don't but know. It's kind of I like... I mean, it's very interesting. Off. It's a very interesting... A correlation and like vitamin C and vitamin D, MMR is pretty harmless. You can go ask your doc for an immunization if you'd like. Yeah, um, but but the whole idea of that was to stimulate your innate immune response. Remember, you had Chumakov like months ago talking about this. This is yeah. why he wanted to give people OPV, and then we said, wait a minute, you can't give people OPV because then you have the potential to reseed the population. Remember that we had that whole discussion. And then in yeah, February yeah. at EB68, he said, oh, we have the perfect vaccine against 68. We just give them OPV. You didn't like that idea. As I said, you have the potential for receding, and we don't monitor in this country. Yeah. I'm not a big proponent. And it's an induction of the innate immune response, yeah. which is rather yeah. generic. Have you heard any more studies about reinfection? I think Daniel talked about it last week on TWIF. Yeah, there have been some more besides the ones we've talked about. Just a handful more. You know, it's not all that frequent, but they're happening. Yeah, I've, I want to I have to leave in a few minutes. It's snowing and I need to get going. Careful driving. I don't drive, I walk. Okay. But the well, cars don't know how to drive. Yeah, I know. Be safe. Yeah, so All right. at 845, I'll leave. Can we do? Oh, 845, 845. thank you. Very yeah. good. I haven't heard. Louise says, I haven't heard a lot about AstraZeneca vaccine. I haven't caught up with my past few TWIVs. Is there anything to know about it? That's the one people will get in Mexico. So, um, no, they. That's they the are, one where they did the wrong dosing. <laughs> yeah, they did the wrong dosing. Yeah. So they're still in their phase three. And uh, we haven't heard anything more after the wrong dosing, which gave a better <laughs> efficacy. Yeah, I don't think we're, I don't think we're, I don't think the FDA is a big fan. What kind of virus can a giant red centipede get? <laughs> I don't know. It would be an insect <laughs> virus, though. It would be interesting to Dysis, study. Dysistronis. Yeah, it could be Dysistronic, like uh, the Dysistroviridae. Cricket yeah, paralysis, okay. yeah. Insect viruses are very interesting. Not not terribly well studied, though. When does your spring semester start? Um, January 7th? Yes. Let me look. My course, by the way, my virology course begins. It's January 11th is the spring semester at Columbia. I was wrong. And uh, that, that's when I start teaching my virology course, and it'll all be, the lectures will be all up again. So you can check them out. Christina Good. says, so then it is bad news that for herd immunity, if they all become carriers that don't get sick. Yeah. If the vaccines turn out not to prevent infection and they allow transmission, then it's a bad news for herd immunity. Yeah. For that particular virus. But 
we're not there yet. We don't I'm know. not sure. I don't. I... If the vaccine still allows transmission after infection, then you can't achieve herd immunity. Yeah, we just said that earlier, remember? Yeah. Should we still wear a mask even after two shots of mRNA vaccine? Yes. Yeah, you should, because, you know, early on, very few people are going to be vaccinated. When 80% are, then you can take your mask off. Well, we won't get there till next spring, I think. Did you get your vaccine I, yet, Amy? No, I'm not in a good group for being at the forefront. I don't have any health problems. I'm not overweight and I'm not old. You're too young, yeah. Yeah, I, like there's got to be like half a billion people in front of me. Okay, are there any attenuated vaccines in trial? Um, I thought China had one. China does have one. Let's see if I can find. Where's your little graphic of the 3,000 thingies that Condit sent you? Yeah, I'm looking for it. It's the Milken uh, vaccine tracker, and it tells you all the vaccines. Let's see. Gosh, there are 236 vaccines in development. And um, let's see if we can find very quickly the attenuate. I know there's some uh, being developed in China for sure. Okay, so let's see. Here we go. Uh, the code on this figure. Where is the code? Oh, key. Here we go. Attenuated vaccine is um, green. So, yeah, we have, um, it looks like three in phase one, three attenuated uh, vaccines in phase one. So that's very early on. Yeah, but the problem is, is it wasn't supported by Fauci and the NIH here. So like our grant has gotten a lot of problems. So Minna and Tan on CNN said vaccinated people can be asymptomatic. Minna said highly possible, could even be mild. Okay. Genius. Why are we doing a trial of mixing AstraZeneca and Sputnik? Sputnik already uses two different vector strains. So AstraZeneca is a little behind. So they decided to do a head-to-head -head comparison. And um, I think that they think that's the only way they can move forward and show that they're better than something else. So here's the issue. Once you have a vaccine license, so nothing's licensed yet. They all they have EUAs in the U.S. But once they're licensed, then that's the standard of care. And you can't try something else without a standard of care. So, for example, when there were the first antivirals for hepatitis C virus, which was basically interferon, to test the next ones, the next generation, you always had to include interferon in the trial because you can't deny people the standard of care. So that's in part why they're doing this. Right, Amy? I don't know. Could be. I was just thinking about how when Sabin went to the government with his vaccine and the government said, ah, we already have one. Salt is that's fine. Right. Go that's away. Right. That's right. And then you had the Cutter episode. Cutter where they didn't completely inactivate the uh, inactivated polio vaccine. HEC-293 cells are used for testing mRNA, not production, but they're used for production in the AstraZeneca product. Okay. Well, the AstraZeneca is an adenovirus, right? It's not an mRNA-based virus with a liposome. It's a particle. It's an, a viral particle. If you've had axillary lymph nodes removed, should you get vaccinated in the other arm? I would think so because... It's important that the mRNA vaccine or whatever vaccine goes to the local lymph nodes. So, yeah, even though I am not a physician and don't, I am not giving medical advice. <laughs> well, that's good. But Amy was almost said, the doctor, right? Was, sort of. Yeah, maybe. Decided no. Okay, with respect to the allergy to the Pfizer mRNA vaccine, the two individuals had history of anaphylaxis for food and drugs. Component responsible is currently not known. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jenny says they raised the cost of EpiPens a lot before SARS-CoV-2. Yeah, I remember that whole story about raising the price of EpiPens. Yeah, because some company got the rights and, yeah. Price gouging. 
Abraham says that about the data from Moderna after one dose having 37% PCR positive, how do we know these are asymptomatic? Maybe these are very high threshold CTs. So CT has nothing to do with symptomatic. There's no correlation between being uh, being CT having a CT value of X and whether or not you're symptomatic or not asymptomatic. Yeah, I think they um, must know the CT, right? And they, they concluded that it was an, a bona fide infection, right? Not like a 37 yeah. or 38 CT. No, I'm sure it was in I'm sure it was in the high 20s. After all of this stuff, I can't imagine that uh, they would make that big a mistake. Um, Jenny's also talking about the cost of a drug raised very high. Yeah, this is always an issue uh, when you have a market cornered. What do you think of the potential of the new Chinese aerosolized vaccination? Yeah, I was just looking at that paper the other day because Amy put it in our folder. We have a shared SARS-CoV-2 folder on our Dropbox. And Amy puts papers in, and I, and I see them. Right, Amy? Yes. And this was an interesting one where it didn't give in a good— it didn't give protection after IM, but after IN it did. I think that's quite interesting. I like the intranasal route of immunization. Um, so that could be interesting. And it's very easy to give, right? <clears throat> yes. I don't see why it would be any different than what's the, there is an intranasal flu vaccine, right? Or there's an intranasal anti-flu, antiviral, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, more talk about drug prices. <clears throat> How many lipid nanoparticles in a one-dose mRNA vaccine? <clears throat> Do you know, Amy? I do not know. Um, we could calculate it, but there's, there's, as you know, what is the dose? 200 micrograms per dose, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, here we go. Is it possible that with the glove shortages, severe allergies were the result of latex gloves used and not the vaccines themselves? Gosh, I've never I heard of a latex allergy going to the person who was not wearing the gloves, like not sticking their hands in the gloves. But I could be wrong. Will you guys be getting vaccinated? Yeah, when they tell us, um, we will, sure. Um, I am 180 million in line in the U.S. Did you ever look at your number, Amy? No, what, are you crazy? You can go to the New York <laughs> Times thing. They I can, know, but I don't need to know. They, when they come for me, they come for me. I'm not, I don't need yeah. to know when they're coming. I have a and long time. When they say I'm ready, I'll go. But I don't need to go before. I'm not special. I'll just uh, hunker down here and podcast. You live in your basement. Where are you going? When did, why did it take 40 years to work on mRNA and just release it? Well, because they had to figure out how to make these lipid nanoparticles and protect it. And they spent a lot of years futzing around with DNA vaccines, and they didn't really work in people. Uh, but I do think that the protection with the lipid nanoparticle was a big key, which is only recently developed. Where's the herpes vaccine for the herpes pandemic? Um, good question. It's very hard to, to get those uh, vaccines trialed in the U.S., but maybe people will try a... Uh, mRNA vaccine. I know that Moderna's got a CMV, cytomegalovirus mRNA vaccine in the works, which encodes a couple of different viral glycoproteins. Yeah, but CMV is considered uh, a torch agent and more... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it has it's more a big problem with, with immunosuppression for, for transplants yeah, exactly. and so forth. Uh, Paolo says, if 70% of people get vaccinated, will we reach herd immunity? Well, that's the calculation based on yeah. the R0, right? Based on the R0 of 2 to 3, so it should be about 70%. And, you know, in, in, we did a paper on TWIV today where in Brazil, you know, they had a big outbreak in the Amazon uh, this year, and um, the number of people infected went over 70%. Yeah, it was a disaster. All right. I got to go. Thank you, Amy. I'll see, 
I'll see you next week. Well, I, hopefully I will see you sooner, but. Uh, oh, you're hopefully. driving through the snow now? Well, probably not tomorrow if they're 14 inches. But if Friday well, it's all cleared, I'll be, I'll be in Friday. Uh, well, I don't think it's even supposed to stop until late or tomorrow afternoon. All right. I don't know. We I'm can sure we'll be. I'm sure we'll be in touch. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate your participation. It's good. All right. I'll talk to you Bye. later. Bye. Bye. Okay. Let's go just to me here. Yep. So, um, all right. So some information on this H6970 is more infectious. So if that's in cell culture, it doesn't matter to me too much. What matters is in people. But I'll take a look at this and um, let you know what I think, okay? I promise. Can you get a vaccine against norovirus? Not yet, but people are working on it. And I think eventually it will come. It's, not, it's been delayed because it was only up until a few years ago that they could actually grow norovirus in cell culture, right? For, me, for years they couldn't, so it makes it hard to make a vaccine, but now they can, so that's coming. Do spike proteins produced by mRNA vaccines have sugars attached to them? Absolutely. So they're made, right? They're, they're translated in the cell, and they're going to, by virtue of having the protein having a signal sequence, they're going to get targeted uh, to the ER, right? Unless they've taken the signal sequence out of the, the protein, um, and in which case it would be sent through the ER and all the glycos and the Golgi and the glycosylation machinery. But I don't know if they left the signal sequence in or not. That's a good question. Somehow an immune herd of Europeans wiped out 90% of two continents with no transportation through the jungles, vast wilderness. So the herd immunity is just silly. Well, it's not really silly. It's been proven epidemiologically for viruses anyway. Okay. I'm happy to send you the references if you'd like. I think placental development to argue for the health of importance of viruses in humans is a bit circular. There are metazoans without placentas that have adapted fine. Yeah, but um, I can't imagine humans. What do you want? You want us to give a live birth and then um, keep the, the babies in a pouch like the marsupials? I'm not sure we would have advanced as well, but you're right. I, I know it's circular. Uh, that that I wouldn't use that as an example of uh, our viruses are beneficial, just how we have exapted some viral genes. I would love to hear Vincent explain the polio vaccine. Um, I'm, I'm happy to do a twiv on that. Probably would take a while to tell the history of both and all that. They're quite interesting. There's two different vaccines, an inactivated and an attenuated they're both being used globally, and uh, we have less than a few hundred cases of polio every year, almost eradicated. With Regeneron's product, I met in hospitalized severe patients as they're getting other IV therapeutics. Oh, okay. A monoclonal in hospitalized patients is useless because at the point that you go to a hospital, you can't breathe, you need oxygen— you don't have a virus problem anymore. You have an immune response problem. Virus titers are already going down, and drugs, antivirals or monoclonals in hospital, not useful. Clinical trials have shown that. You have to take them before you get in the hospital. So that's why they haven't been widespread. I don't know what Amy meant by that it's dangerous. There's some, there were some side effects uh, that were reported with the Regeneron, but we don't know exactly because the, there's no paper published. Hi, Eric. Has Columbia seen an influx of micros? Yes, we've had more applications to the PhD program than in uh, many previous years. I think people are turned on to uh, microbiology, right? And they are into it, which is great. What would the experiment be to determine if SARS-CoV-2 vaccine prevents transmission? Um, transmission. Okay, what you'd have to do is, I think you, transmission itself is hard, but you could measure shedding, right? You could vaccinate people, do control and vaccine arms of your uh, clinical trial, and then you have everybody go home and live their lives and 
do a, say, nasal swab every two days, and then they send it into the lab and it gets tested for virus. And then you see if the people in the, in the vaccine arm are shedding virus any less than in the control arm and the levels. You do a CT value so that, you know, the levels of shed virus. You can't really directly look at transmission. That would be really hard. But you can measure shedding. And, you know, if you shed hardly anything, then they're not going to transmit. The problem is what level of shedding do you need to get transmission? I don't know that. And so it'd be tough. I guess you could design some kind of study in a household, you know, where you have a household of, say, five or more people and one person is vaccinated or placeboed and you look at transmission to the other people. You could do that, I suppose. Yeah. Yes, HPV vaccines are considered to grant sterilizing immunity. That's right. Yes, and, and some pneumococcal and meningococcal. But for most vaccines, that's not the case and it's not necessary. Yes. You will not eradicate this anytime soon. No, no, absolutely. It will never be eradicated, but polio might be. Do you know if vaccines will be available to be injected at home private, privately, assuming it's done by a professional? Only when the vaccines are approved, final approval. Like, which for the Pfizer would be next April, I believe. Uh, they said then they can sell it to doctors' offices and so forth. You can't do that over with an EUA, though, I believe, unless the individual applies for the EUA, which they usually don't do. Did you or any of the TWIV team get an MMR? I did. After listening to TWIV 691, and the staff at my local CVS was very confused, but they let me get it. I haven't just because I haven't had a chance, but I I would. In fact, I was just on a stream tonight, a Twitch stream, and I said, uh, I'd get it. I think it's like vitamin D. It's harmless. Can't hurt. And a bunch of people are, seem to be uh, getting it. So another question about the mutation in the, in the England strain. Again, I have to look at that. I'll get back to you next time. Do we need a vaccine? Yeah, we do. There's no question that this virus is spreading enormously. It's causing a lot of death. The only way we can stop it at this point is by a vaccine. There's just no way, other way to stop it. <clears throat> What's the best way to approach people that don't know much about cell structure and function? They're afraid of an mRNA vaccine. The concern it will change their genetic material and hurt them. Well, <clears throat> I guess you could say that, yeah, it's hard. But you know, everybody knows that genetic material is in the nucleus of a cell, but it has to get into the cytoplasm to be made into protein. So I say that mRNA is the messenger that brings it out. And it's, once it leaves the nucleus, that's it. It doesn't go back in. So there's no chance that it's going to go in the nucleus and alter your genetic information. Yeah, there we go. Vinnie Rack. How can you have a name like Vinnie Rack? <laughs> it degrades in a matter of days. That's right. It does do right in a matter of days. There are two papers about reverse transcriptase use of COVID-2, the last in Harvard. Could it be that long COVID has become some retrovirus ability? No, the virus is not a retrovirus. The, the reverse transcriptase may come from the cell, if these reports are correct. Uh, and um, it wouldn't give long COVID because these are just fragments of RNA, of viral RNA that are produced, not the whole virus. So it can't explain that. If the mRNA vaccines help you develop antibodies, is it likely that a vaccinated person is less likely to shed virus since the antibodies are keeping virus from replicating? I think it's likely, but you don't know. And so you have to test it. And that's what's not being done widely in these vaccine trials. Because, yeah, you would think, if you have the antibodies in your respiratory tract, when the virus comes in, it's, it's going to lower the load, and so you should shed less, and should, you shouldn't be able to be transmitting. But it's not the case with all vaccines, so it needs to be tested, and we're going to know that in the next six months or so. Meanwhile, we have to immunize as many people as possible. What about mouthwash for inhibiting virus? The problem with mouthwash is that as soon as you're finished, the virus comes out of cells again, and it's the levels are back up. So it's a very transient inhibition, and so it's not really going to do anything. Without a vaccine for SARS-2 that elicits sterilizing immunity, would we expect to see a drop in virus replication among vaccinated people? Yeah, I think it should drop. 
I'm thinking it should, as we just said, the, the loads should drop and it should inhibit transmission, but we have to check it. And it's only been checked very briefly in this um, a Moderna trial results. And you can find them on the FDA site, by the way. They, they tell you that 58% of the vaccinated people were not infected as judged by PCR. <clears throat> Any numbers on the a number of reinfections? Well, the ones that have been reported, certainly less than 12. I'm, I'm sure there are many more that were not being investigated, right? But, you know, some of these reinfections are with disease, some are not. Could someone with an HIV infection integrate the SARS-CoV genome? So if you had, yeah, if you had um, HIV infection of the same cell, in theory, that could reverse transcribe the, the SARS-CoV-2 genome or a part of it. But I think it's unlikely because the, um, the HIV RT acts during virus entry in the cytoplasm, and then once the genome, the DNA copy of HIV gets in the nucleus, there's no more RT around. So it would have to be in that um, time point. Yes, the research shows that the mumps titers are from the vaccine, not from natural infection. Yeah, I, and so you got MMR. I think it's a great idea. OPV is not available in the U.S. That's right. We stopped using OPV. We only use IPV, the inactivated polio vaccine. What are your best theories as to the possible causes of long COVID? I hear all kinds of things, but I like autoantibodies. I don't see any evidence for persistent infection, right? But some kind of autoimmune condition, yeah, I think that's likely. There's evidence for that in MECFS, which is a similar long-term condition. So um, that's what I think, and we'll learn more in the next year. Yeah, Amy's great. She's very straightforward, right? She doesn't pull punches. I've worked with Amy for many years. <clears throat> You love Amy more. Okay. <laughs> Amy tells it like it is. You're right. Please do not take grams of vitamin C a day. Yes, you shouldn't. But Linus Pauling did, and yet most of it's excreted in the urine. Yes, so you end up not getting much higher blood levels than you would if you took less. Now, this is an interesting question. I got this on Twitch earlier tonight. Why smoking seems correlated with less serious cases? You know, it's, I would think the opposite is the case. Smoking is always associated with more severe respiratory infection because it compromises the lung immune system. So I just don't think these observations are correct. Any, any vaccines besides MMR and OPV could be protective against COVID besides actual COVID vaccine. So when I spoke with Konstantin Chumakov months ago about OPV and its protection against COVID, so that's because of a... A short term, probably innate immune effect, three, four months. He said any infectious vaccine, flu vaccine, um, any any replicating vaccine seems to do that. Could you talk me down from considering the lack of action with the Minna method entirely scandalous? Locals don't have a clue. I, I agree. I think we should have done this months ago. And Michael Minna has been trying. Uh, we, other people have been trying. Lots of TWIV listeners have been trying. I don't really understand why it hasn't progressed. It's not like people haven't tried and put money into it. Um, and so I'm, I'm really, and, you know, Michael is still promoting it, but nothing is happening. I'm RH negative and sensitive. Where can I find data on people with my unique blood cells in the vaccine? Um, well, you'd have to look in the literature, but there are some websites that are correlating uh, patient genotype with um, COVID responses. And I don't recall the name of it offhand, but I will look it up and have it next time for you. Is there an advantage to having the at-home test prescribed by a doctor? 
I don't, I don't see why. You're talking about a rapid antigen test. I don't see why you would need a doctor. I mean, if it's the doctor, then it's more likely to be reported. And if you just want to know yourself, then it doesn't matter. Hmm. Is SARS-CoV-2 a respiratory virus, a circulatory virus, an immunological virus, an enzymatic bradykinin virus? So it's a, it's a respiratory virus. The main disease is still a respiratory disease, and that's a consequence of virus reproduction in the respiratory tract. Everything else is immune-mediated. And um, I, I think it's amazing that the virus is, is knocking on so many systems, but there are, I think those effects, neurological, gastroenterological, skin, kidney, et cetera, heart, I think they're all a byproduct of cytokine inflammation responses. It's an interesting question, though. What are your thoughts about the records of the Wuhan Institute of Virology's research suddenly becoming unavailable? Well, it's never on. They were never available to me, so I I don't know what you mean. But you know, I know the virologists there, and I know other people who know them. They're honest people. They don't mess around, and I don't think that the public knows them like we do. Would you need to get a separate mumps vaccine versus the MMWR if you had natural mumps as a kid? No, you can get the same MMR. MMR. <laughs> it's MMR. MMWR is the publication. Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. <laughs> That's funny. I'm not criticizing you. Uh, can you make the Q&A longer? Yeah, I, uh, sure. Amy only wants to do it for half an hour. So if you're okay with me, I can make it longer. I can go to 9.30 tonight. I just did, by the way, a two-and-a-half-hour Twitch stream. I love answering questions, so it's not a problem for me. But um, I, I would tonight I would like to stop at 9.30. But next week, I'll go longer. Sure, if you like it. I, didn't, I don't know if people would like it, so I'm happy that uh, you're all here. It's great. We would like for you to look at my high-throughput QT-PCR mobile test environments. Sure, you know where to find me. You can send me the information. My theory on why no lick a stick, yep, is because they don't want us testing our pets and food. You know, that assumes a conspiracy. I don't think so. I just think it's hard to get to work. I know a guy in a company, okay, he sent me my uh, rapid, uh, rapid antibody test, which I used and I used to make that video. And um, he says they're working on it. It's really hard. But he said it'll happen. It will probably happen next year. Vincent, I've got my book now. It's for beginners and was recommended on your show. It's How the Immune System Works by Lauren Sampirak. Loving it. Yeah, he's he's got a series of those books which are very good. Amy's gone, so I can't ask her anymore. Like to eventually assist doctors without borders and microbes without borders. Uh, I would w be wonder what would be the best method to contact you. Oh, twiv at microbe TV. You guys know that, right? Comes to me. Yeah, I, I'm excited about the spring semester too. It's going to be cool. Going to obviously talk a lot about SARS-CoV-2. Go to Mexico for OPV. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You have to benef You have to balance the risk of travel versus the benefit, because uh, I don't know if it's worth it. I personally wouldn't travel at this point. Is the virus so extremely different from all other viruses as the politicians and media led us to believe? I mean, is dangerous. So the, the the reason this is a problem is because it's brand new and no human had an immunity before it appeared, right? And so it rips through the population. Everybody's susceptible and it causes serious disease. So did SARS cause serious disease. So did MERS and so does still MERS coronavirus cause serious disease. But, you know, SARS we were able to stop and MERS doesn't really transmit. So... In that sense, it's it's unusual, but it's no more lethal than Ebola, but Ebola doesn't transmit well. So look, the mainstream media always 
makes broad statements. They don't know what they're talking about for the most part because they're not scientists. They have to take what scientists say and reinterpret them. And that's their job. They get paid for it. I'm sorry, I skipped this long haulers. Uh, many of us are not having a normal immune response. Long haulers are a puzzle. And it very, may very well be, as we said earlier, that long, the problem in a long hauler is a, an autoimmune response of some sort. But people are working on it, and I'm sure it'll get sorted out. Here is another topic we've touched on. Can the vaccine reduce contagiousness? Maybe. How do you test it? You, sh you test people to see how they're shedding after vaccination, which means you have to test them frequently. And um, we're, n we're not doing that at the moment, but I, I assume we will in the coming months. I think the f not mRNA vaccines will not be sterilizing, but will produce an immune response robust enough to prevent growth of the virus to infectious titer for any significant amount of time. Maybe f growth to a transmissible titer. It could very well be. These are absolutely good points. I was asked today by a patient, that what if we have the vaccine, but also HIV, a virus that has reverse transcriptase, because the vaccines, yeah, of course, yeah. Someone asked that before. Could, if SARS-CoV-2 co-infects the same cell, could it be reverse transcribed? It could be, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. It won't be the whole viral genome, and it's not going to contribute to the disease course. What do you think about the ad five vectors? So the ad five are replicating vectors, and they, of course, activate CD4 cells, which are HIV targets, and that's been a problem in the past. Um, I, I, in general, I don't like the ad vectors because you get immunity to the vector very quickly, and then then your boost is not very efficient. I really like the mRNA vaccines. I like. I think inactivated vaccines are interesting, even attenuated vaccines. But I think this vector immune response is, is an issue. All right, SARS-CoV-2 is not a retrovirus. It does not encode its own reverse transcriptase, right? That's the definition of a retrovirus. The copying of SARS-CoV-2 RNA to DNA is done by a cell cellular reverse transcriptase. With new strains, how does the vaccine efficacy change? I assume you mean vaccine efficacy. There, there aren't any new strains yet. There are isolates with different sequences. I do not think that any of them for the foreseeable future will change the vaccine efficacy. The exception is if a virus goes into another animal, it can change enough to evade human antibodies. And we saw that in mink, and it could happen again. So I think it's really important to keep livestock free of, of the virus. Did you mention the link to where we can register to get the vaccine when it gets available? Yeah, I'll have to ask uh, Daniel Griffin that tomorrow when I do my uh, weekly report with him, okay? <laughs> yes, coronaviruses are positive. Sense RNA viruses, not retroviruses. That's right. CT is cycle threshold. Whenever you do a PCR test to amplify nucleic acid of a virus, it goes through cycles where it, it does one copying and then denaturation and then copying and cycles. And so at each cycle, you get more and more of the initial RNA or DNA. And so the th cycle threshold is the point where you first see the, the nucleic acid amplified because up until then, you don't see it because there's very little to begin with. So that's the cycle threshold. Or as Edward said, the number of times you have to double genetic material in order for it to be detectable. Perfect. Do we know at what viral load is somebody infectious? No, we don't. We do not. We know a little bit about animals, but they don't translate because mice and ferrets have very different respiratory tracts, right? You can't extrapolate to people. COVID vis-a-vis -vis mRNA vaccines. Can you comment whether inactivated vaccines would provide a much broader spectrum of protection, multi-step versus mRNA? So 
the, the inactivated vaccines will give you antibodies against not just spike, but other viral proteins, right? And so they may be important for blocking infection. So I think they could give you a broader protection uh, and maybe stronger neutralization. But um, and, and there is one in China. The data are published, but uh, the phase three are not yet. Today, California and Alabama quarantined several trucks carrying Pfizer vax because it was becoming too cold. Well, I'm not con I'm not worried about it becoming too cold, but warming up is a problem. If it warms up and you don't know it, especially that's an issue, right? So, um, I'm worried about that in areas that don't have dry ice, for example, or minus seventy freezers. Why would the National Health Service recommend those with a history of allergic reactions not take the vaccine? Yet the CDC says no problem. Well, you know, CDC has been problematic lately. Um, I think if you have an allergic, if you have a known allergy, you should see the, your physician and make sure it's not a problem with the vaccine because there are different kinds of allergies, and so you want to make sure. And if you do take the vaccine, to have an EpiPen around, right? Are you concerned about? the possibility of homologous recombination with a, an attenuated coronavirus vaccine and subsequent reversion. The, uh, the, attenu the way they're making the attenuated coronavirus vaccines is they are changing thousands of bases. So I think it would be very hard for even to recombine and make a, a virulent virus. If it were just a simple attenuation with a few mutations, then I would be concerned, yeah. Twenty three millionth in line. That's pretty good. I'm a hundred and eighty million. My sister has a latex allergy. Being touched by a glove is enough to give her symptoms. You're absolutely right. Amy didn't have that right. Sorry. <laughs> Scientists are the most important people to keep alive. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't think you need to keep me alive. It's fine. Voices for Vaccines is collecting people's pics of them getting vaccinated to help with vaccine confidence. That's cool. Vaccine Voices for Vaccines. Very nice. When I get vaccinated, I'll take a picture. But it'll be next year, so it won't matter anymore. Um, yeah, I, I saw about this Tom Cruise thing. My wife was watching the news, and I saw him ranting. I didn't know what he was ranting about, so he he was championing distancing. Well, that's good. That's good. We're just getting people to say goodbye to Amy. <laughs> Did I say it would be over in three months? No. Someone just told me I made good forecasts. All right. Well, if you say so, but I don't think I said it would be over in three months. I thought it would go well into next year. You want a centipede trip with a centipede viruses? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see, Frank. Did you see the news piece last night with Secretary of HHS Alex Azar stating drug companies don't test and stockpile potential vaccines because they lose a lot of money? Yeah. Hey, you all know this, right? That this whole pandemic could have been prevented, right? If we had antivirals last year. And they're easy to make. There's one that's being tested now. We did a TWIV on it last week. It, it prevents SARS-CoV-2 transmission in ferrets. It's a nucleoside analog that's been available for years, and it works really well. All we had to do was test that way back then against a variety of coronas. We, the RNA polymerase is all similar. We could have tested a bunch of them. We could have had this stockpiled and waiting. Companies don't want to do it because they can't make money when the virus is not around. So who's going to do it? Now, and we're screwed as a result. Yes, you should all be really pissed off because this could have been prevented. 
hundred percent. Do you think officials would push for only a single dose? No, I don't think so. That would be a problem because then you're going to get even less protection. So I do not think they will do that. If they create a vaccine against SARS-CoV-2, why can't they include the four strains of the common cold coronas? Um, no one cares about them. They don't cause very much death, very little. So nobody wants to make a vaccine. It costs money and, and no one would use it. I did check the box for teacher and it didn't make any difference. I'm still 180th in line. <laughs> Without herd immunity, vaccinations would not make sense. Yeah, I mean, for many of them, but you know, for, uh, for polio, it's a different story. You have to immunize a lot of people. So this is back to the um, glycosylation question about spike. I would imagine you would have the signal sequences to have membrane-bound spike because otherwise you probably wouldn't get a good B-cell response. No, but remember, the spike is made and processed by the proteasome in the antigen-presenting cell, and then it's displayed in MHC, right, as a little peptide. So you don't, you don't really care about membrane-bound at that point unless you want to display it on a muscle cell and have that recognized. Yeah, but I'm not sure that's the major route of recognition. ever considered doing a show on new advances in protein folding? Well, I'm hoping next year we start to do some other shows other than SARS-CoV-2, right? Because there's a lot of other cool stuff out there. And some of these questions, by the way, I'm skipping because I answered them already earlier. Spike for Moderna is definitely targeted to the cell membrane. Okay, so it's got the signal sequence. But I don't know if you'd need it. You know, as I said, it's going to be processed in APCs, right? It would be interesting to compare the two, with and without. Lori Garrett, I've thought of it. Yeah, I will definitely ask her next year. What's the Big Pharma going to do when mRNA vaccines cure all the viruses? Never happen. There are always going to be more viruses. And it's not going to work for all viruses, so they still have to work on the others. Would HIV drugs work against SARS-CoV-2 as they share CD4 binding site? Well, there are no HIV drugs that target CD4 binding site. And a few of the um, other HIV protease inhibitors have been tested and they didn't work. So, no. It makes you think that inoculation load doesn't matter. I I want proof of things. That's the way science works, right? You can say, yeah, it must matter, but not prove it. No, it doesn't work for me. And the, the experiments were done with flu, but they're not been done with SARS-CoV-2. And until they're done, I'd say there's no evidence that dose makes a difference in disease. If you look at the animal experiments that have been done with SARS-CoV-2, um, there's no more severe disease. It's the same disease. It just happens faster and in more animals when you give them more virus. I don't say that never happened. It's not true, but I want to see the evidence. Won't we see if there's transmission soon with the vaccinated medical staff going home to unvaccinated family? Um, it depends. If the vaccinated medical staff still mask and distance, then maybe they won't transmit, right? So it possibly... But that's one of the things we have to look at, right? Does the mRNA vaccine have any homology with human mRNA? Not that I know of. There's no homology of spike with human proteins. Any chance of reverse transcriptase leading to some integration? There's always a chance. Um, there's always a chance that... Uh, any RNA virus can be reverse transcribed by cellular RT and integrate. It's very rare. And, you know, integration in a somatic cell 
doesn't matter because your somatic cells turn over, right? And they're gone. So it doesn't matter if it's if a gene is disrupted in a skin cell or a muscle cell because they are gone. Stem cell would be an issue. But these, as far as I know, this virus doesn't infect stem cells. Did you see where Carrie Mullis called Fauci a lying pharmacist who didn't know anything about science or electron microscopy? Well, that's not true. You know, I've I've sat next to Carrie Mullis before, and he's a smart guy, but not always on point. And I know Fauci well, and he doesn't get everything right. So, of course, he knows science. That's ridiculous. He knows more than I do. Well, maybe you don't think I know anything either, so. <laughs> Vaccine doesn't stop the spread. Won't it be more harmful than good? No, it prevents disease, and that's really the key here. We want, we want to prevent people from dying. So in, in, in that sense, it's good to do. What's in Pfizer's vaccine? It's mRNA, an RNA molecule that codes for spike, the virus spike, and it's wrapped in lipids, four or five different lipids. It's quite simple. Uh, you're welcome. So, Vinny Rack, you have the same name, huh? Vincent Racaniello, really? Or just Rack? Either way, I know there are other Vincent Racaniellos. I'm a good student, too. Well, you're much younger than I am, right? Are there any potential treatments for long haulers? People are working on it. And if you can get to the underlying basis, what causes it, then you can make a therapy. And people are working on it pretty hard because it's affecting a lot of people. So um, I don't know when, though. I don't know if horizon is the right word, but... Of course, there's a huge amount of interest. What's the method used to get long-term data on how long these vaccines will protect from severe disease? So they follow the trial participants for two years, right? Uh, outside of the trial participants, very hard unless some medical center wants to do its own study. But most of it is in trial participants. Hundreds of reinfections reported in Mexico, not proven with genome. You have to, yeah, you have to sequence to make sure that you actually have a different virus coming in the second time. It's pretty straightforward. But if you don't do that, I'm not believing that it's a reinfection, yeah. I don't believe that SARS-CoV-2 infects T cells. The data are not good, all right? Will this be possible? I get mRNA vaccines and two months later get exposed, develop no symptoms. Six months later, antibodies fade and I get symptoms. Well, antibodies could fade in six months, but um, if you get reinfected again, then you, yeah, you could have a symptomatic infection. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think you'll have enough antibody to prevent serious symptoms. Oh, what does a non-integer CT value mean? Well, that's because the the way the assay is done is at each cycle, they measure, say, fluorescence produced by a dye, which binds to DNA, right? So it's it's a continuous readout. And so you get a line, and then you go to the to the point where you see the fluorescence, and it can be between integers. That's all. It's... It's simply because the fluorescence is plotted on a line. Even though it's red uh, after each cycle, it's it's plotted on a line. So people just pick at the 50% point. Immune system dysregulation, autoimmunity, yes, it's possible, but no proof yet. Yes, I have checked the papers claiming SARS-CoV-2 infects immune cells. I do not agree with the conclusions. You may, it's fine. I have a different way of looking at it, and it, it I don't think the, the evidence is definitive. Do tissues in the eyes have ACE2? Yes. 
and yes, I eyewear is absolutely recommended for people who are at high risk, like healthcare workers. Daniel Griffin always wears an eye shield because you're constantly being bombarded with uh, with droplets with virus. And so, yes, it really really helps. Can you do a best of 2020? I'm not sure there's a best in this year, but I know what you mean. Um, we always do uh, the first episode of the next year is always a, you know, 2020, the, the previous year in virology, um, where we just, the, the TWIV team just talks about it. But showing clips of the best interviews and discussions is an interesting idea. Uh, and I wish I had assistance to do that with me because it would be it's all going to fall to me to do the editing, but I'll, I'll think about that. Does vaccination make us technically a genetically modified organism? Well, it's not a permanent modification. All right, so the vaccine comes and goes, so it's, I wouldn't consider it genetically modified. Would any of the vaccines give immunity to other coronavirus strains? I don't think it will be protective immunity. No, they are all um, quite specific. My brother's tested for summer was asymptomatic. He has been lately complaining about shortness of breath and rheumatic pain. Has there been any cases of long-term COVID for asymptomatic patients? Yes. In fact, if you go back to the TWIV this week in virology, where we had some long-term COVID patients on, they, we talked about that. You can have no symptoms and still develop long COVID. Hmm, this is interesting. Government, which government? The U.S. approved the $5 antigen emergency use, but you need a televisit with it. Mina is upset about it. Is that the U.S.? Hmm. Uh, was the UK too quick agreeing? It was only a week. I think it was fine. That's not that's not our problem at the moment. You know, it's 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 a week earlier. What country had the best response? China. They have no cases right now. I think Singapore for a while was good, but then it got out of control. Um, South Korea, Japan were good, but I think China is amazing because it started there and now it's zero, right? <clears throat> Why is the U.S. allowing all the interstate flights? You know, according to a Department of Defense study that I haven't seen, but I saw a summary of, airplanes are safe places because of the airflow from top to bottom and the ultrafiltration of the air. And if you wear a mask, you're okay. So now, now, so you're talking about a person who's infected moving and bringing it to another state. Well, you, you know, in many states, depending on where you're coming from, you're supposed to quarantine but they don't enforce that. So it's a, it's a shit show, right? You think in the long term, 50 to 100 years, with the selection pressure of viruses selecting for more infectious but less lethal will become another common cold. I do, and I don't know if it's going to take 50 to 100 years, but yes, um, I think this will eventually become the fifth human common cold coronavirus. What do you think about mixing saline with iodine as a nasal spray? So anything you spray in your nose, chemical-based, it's transient because it's not going to stay there forever. And maybe an hour at the most, it's going to be diluted out and mucus is going to move it away. And then the cells are going to keep producing virus. So if you're infected, that is. Now, if you're saying to protect yourself, it's the same thing. It's going to be transient. If it was all immune response, though, why wouldn't we see these with other respiratory viruses? Well, every, all the viruses are different, right? The amount that they tickle the immune response determines how much it overreacts, and some viruses simply don't. Some of them inhibit the immune response. So they're all, um, they're all different. Uh, should I worry about side effects like hyperpyremia or Bell's palsy? Well, no, because these are also occurring in the placebo group. Bell's palsy, three cases vaccine, three cases placebo. So this is not a vaccine-induced problem. It's just things that happen when you immunize, you know, 30,000 people. Who on Twitch did I talk to? Oh, so, 
Ethan and Devin were my hosts, and uh, it was on the front page tonight. I had like 20,000 20, people watching. It was cool. Thank you for the love. Uh, have you heard that CDC is not processing any flu cases? No, they are. I just was looking at the data. They're processing fewer, about 20,000 in week 49 compared to 35,000 in week 49 last year. But they are. Yeah. Can SARS-CoV-2 induce protection against SARS-1? There are some cross-reactive -re antibodies, but I'm not sure they would be protective. Nobody's tried that. SARS-1 is hard to work with because it's a select agent. It's, it is uh, regulated by the FBI, so not everybody can work on it. All right, folks, we are out of time. And I know there are a lot of questions left, but I got through a lot of them. And we will come back next week and um, with Amy, of course. And Amy promised to stay longer next week. And then I will stay beyond her, okay? So it was great uh, talking to all of you. Great questions. And um, stay safe, okay? I would like you all to stay safe. Take care.